Hello. Hello. Hello, Puso. Yes, hello. We can hear you. We are going to start now. Oh, yeah. Pusa. Hello, hello. 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 Yes, thank you for joining, Dr. Mooney. We are going to uh, start yeah. this side event now, uh, but we can hear yeah. you clearly. So we are ready for your presentation later. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We can hear you clearly. Thank you. Yes. yes. Good, after good afternoon, everyone. The Embassy of Pakistan in Bangkok feels honored to partner with our Ministry of Planning, Development and Special Initiative, as well as the Statistics Division of UNESCAP, UNICEF and UNFPA as co-organizers for organization of this momentous event with the theme of building a more resilient future with inclusive civil registration and vital statistics system. At the outset, I would like to welcome all the participants and express my thoughts in the context of organization of this event of paramount importance. Realizing Pakistan's current outlook, strengthening of CRV as system, no doubt is one of the compelling and pivotal step to ensuring development and prosperity of the nation. A robust civil registration system, if in place, provide the basis for the production of reliable population statistics to guide development, planning, and permit monitoring and evaluation of government programs. A broad coach CRVS system plays a critical role in achieving inclusive, equitable, and people-centered development. It is a prerequisite for the protection of the civil, legal, social, and political rights of all individuals, enabling them to access the services for which they are entitled and eligible. In harmony with Vision 2030, outlining that by 2030, all people in Pakistan will benefit from universal and responsive CRVS systems that facilitate the realization of their rights and support good governance, health and development. Pakistan is following a paradigm shift in terms of shifting responsibilities of registration from individuals and families to the state and mainstream mainstreaming of health sector in CRVS system under the national framework for vital events registration reforms. Intersectoral collaboration and development of effective linkages among the concerned departments and institutions is the key to obtain data on vital events and generate trustworthy statistics. The health sector is an increasingly active player in CRVS through its role in the notification of births and deaths with causes of deaths, events that increasingly occur within health institutions or under the care of health personnel. In Pakistan, the health sector has a widespread and trusted network of health facilities and communi community health workers, even in remote areas and among margina marginalized populations. So the healthcare facilities and the hospitals can be mandated to notify the civil registration authorities when a birth or death occurs and provide the key information items needed for the registration of the event. The notification or the reporting of births and deaths from health facilities can create a way towards efficient and optimal registration system in the country. There is a dire need to join hands and promote factor of interoperability. Today's event is an opportunity to discuss this pivotal step regarding establishment and strengthening of linkages with health sector. 
The intent is to generate harmony and sense of responsibility among all stakeholders and urge them to play their part in development of universal CRVS system. The site event is expected to increase the awareness of governments in Asia and Pacific of the merits of closer collaboration between the health sector and showcasing the progress in this area from Pakistan. I look forward to the valuable and fruitful discussion ahead, and I really appreciate all of you for your time. Thank you all. Um, I would like uh, now Dr. Asif to take the floor and moderate the session. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, good afternoon again, dear participants. Uh, yes, and yes, this is the presentation. Uh, my this presentation highlights the various reforms uh, introduced within the overall system of governance uh, intended to produce acceleration and enhancement of CRVS in Pakistan. The reforms are currently under implementation in Islamabad Capital Territory, and they soon shall be rolled out in the rest of the country. Next, please. This is the national vision we have, and it's, it declares that by the year 2030, all people in Pakistan will benefit from universal and responsive CRVS systems that facilitate the realization of their rights and support good governance, health, and development. This is the uh, long-term vision uh, that we have as a uh, at the national level. Next, please. This slide depicts the overall reforms process we adopted. Uh, in the first instance, we conducted rapid and comprehensive assessment of CRVS in Pakistan, which revealed the system is dysfunctional. Based upon findings of these assessments, steering and coordination mechanisms both at the national and provincial levels were instituted. National Steering and Coordination Committee is chaired by the Minister for Planning, Development and Special Initiatives, while the corresponding Steering and Coordination Committees at the provincial levels are headed by the additional Chief Secretaries of the Planning and Development Departments. With the participation of all the stakeholders, including health, uh, local government uh, and other such stakeholders. Uh, this was followed by development of broad policy framework uh, for the CRBS reforms and in subsequent slides, I'll elaborate uh, the salient features of this reforms policy framework. Then the national strategic plan, it is the overarching document and has been prepared and provinces are expected to prepare their respective implementation plans based upon this overarching strategy document. This will also help the development partners and the UN agencies to align their priorities within the national and provincial priorities uh, uh, set in these documents. Feasibility surveys and development projects, uh, they would enable the implementation of CRVS reforms nationwide, like the way they are currently under implementation in Islamabad capital territory. And lastly, the monitoring and evaluation framework, uh, they will help in further refinement of the reform process once the cycle is complete and it's uh, repeated. Next, please. So uh, I'll now elaborate upon uh, the framework for the service reforms that we developed. Next, please. Next, please. Yes, uh, the objectives of uh, this reforms package are in line with the objectives of the regional action framework, which envisages universal registration of vital events, uh, provision of legal documents to claim identity, civil status and uh, status and ensuing rights, and production and dissemination of vital uh, of accurate, complete and timely vital statistics to ensure uh, informed decision making and evidence based policy and planning. Next, please. So 
most uh, revolutionary feature of this reforms package is the policy shift whereby the responsibility to get uh, notifications of births and deaths and to get them registered at the union councils being the registering entity has been shifted from the parents in case of births and family members of the deceased in case of deaths to the state that is the health sector how the health sector as a matter of system uh, and as a matter of their mandate would be notifying these vital events online and real time to the registering entity software developed by Nadra, I'll elaborate in my subsequent slides. There are reforms also for achieving the universality of registration of marriages and divorces, for which the institution of union councils uh, will be strengthened in terms of reform processes and pros. Likewise, the demand generation both at the public level and within the system is the cardinal step uh, that has been envisaged in the reforms package. Next, please. In order to effectively implement uh, the reform processes and flows in public sector and to bring the private sector in loop as well, a CRVS Reforms Act has been finalized. Uh, some detail would be uh, uh, provided uh, by my colleague uh, from UNFP in the subsequent sessions presentation. This Reforms Act identifies the various weaknesses, gaps, lacunas, and redundancies in the existing system and suggests measures to ameliorate them and make the legislative milieu uh, conducive for smooth implementation of the CRVS reforms like mainstreaming of health sector in notification of vital events uh, and implementation of reform processes and flows for marriages and divorce registrations. Uh, uh, the reforms package prescribes uh, development of standardization of uh, uh, vital events, notification and registration forms, and in particular, focus on improving cause of death data by using IC decoding to the cause of death. And this, and there is a seminal work that has been done uh, with the support of vital strategies in standardization of notification and registration forms uh, related to the uh, vital event of deaths and improving cause of death data. In the reforms package, the focus is uh, now on microdata instead of the aggregates. Next, please. As the health sector is mainstreamed in online and real time notification of births and deaths using an additional layer of software developed by Nadra which is integrated with the registration software already operational at the registration entities. Therefore, through these uh, reform processes, uh, there is passive flow of information from the fixed health facility or community to the registering entity. Their verification and registration uh, uh, of these vital events and its onward communication to NADRA being the central data, uh, database. So this information uh, that will be starting from the health facility or community and then onward to the registering entity and then becoming part of the NADRA, it will be a passive flow of information uh, occurring uh, passively and automatically. And we can reconcile uh, the information at specified intervals. Uh, and so a huge data set will be available at the NADRA central database for production and use of vital statistics for informed and evidence-based policy planning and decision making. So in this way, uh, we have tried to make the system uh, real-time, online, uh, uh, having the flow of information occurring as a matter of system automatically and passively. Next, please. Next slide, please. Yes. So uh, this is the depiction of the reform processes and flows. And in this uh, reform model for birth registration, birth notification counters are established within the vicinity of the obstetrics departments. And the information against the 
uh, uh, national identity card number of the parents is immediately captured by on duty doctor or on duty staff nurse and the notification uh, is immediately made through the uh, uh, online real time uh, through the uh, software uh, to the union councils of the residence of the parents in case of birth or the residence of uh, or, or the residence of the uh, family members of the deceased uh, where the and at the union council this event is verified and registered uh, as a matter of system passively and it becomes part of the Nadra Center database. So in this way, the parents or family members of the deceased are now, they are no more part uh, of, uh, of the system to get the notifications or, or to get along the notification to the registering entity to get to register. No, no, it will be the system that is uh, going to do this task automatically as per uh, as their mandate and their responsibility. Next, please. So uh, this, is, uh, this is the uh, reform mechanisms, processes and flows for the death notifications and their registration. This is essentially the same. And for this purpose, uh, we have established death notification counters uh, at the uh, fixed health facilities and the same uh, information will be provided uh, online real time through the Android based, based gadgets by the community health workers in case the death is happening at the community. Uh, otherwise, all the other you know, mechanisms and flows are the same as for the uh, birth uh, notification and registration. Next, please. No, as I meant, uh, now, as I mentioned earlier, the reforms strengthen the institution of the union council. Uh, in the notification and registration of marriages. Uh, and in this system, the prospective couple or their authorized representative. Uh, they approach the union council and all the requisite information is captured against the CNIC uh, of uh, uh, the prospective couple and one page printout is given to them to be signed along with the witnesses uh, on the date of marriage uh, uh, where after they are required to report back to the union council within a specified and prescribed time period under the law. And uh, this signed form is scanned and the event is registered. So in this way, uh, uh, this reform system would enable the universality of registration uh, of the marriages uh, uh, because in the current system, uh, uh, it is, it's not the case uh, that uh, these marriages are being registered. It's only a notification form that is uh, always available with the couple and the event is never registered. So this uh, reform process uh, will enable the event uh, uh, to be registered at any cost. Uh, the, the reforms have been built in such a way. Next please. Similarly is the case with the divorce notification and registration except uh, that if, if a time period has been prescribed for the reconciliation uh, and in, in uh, uh, and if during this reconciliation period uh, if uh, this doesn't happen the reconciliation doesn't happen then the notified event will be registered uh, at the union council and will be uh, onward communicated to the nadra database so in that way uh, all uh, uh, the processes and flows uh, uh, have been designed in a way that will en enable universality of the notification as well as registration of these vital events. So uh, in, in summary, uh, these reforms uh, bring about a policy shift whereby it is now the responsibility of the state to communicate the notification of these uh, vital events of births and deaths from the fixed health facility or community to the registering entity where uh, in real time online and where it is registered as a matter of system passively and it becomes uh, automatically part of the Nadra database without anything to do with the parents or the family member of the deceased. And similarly in case of marriages and divorces, 
the institution of the union councils is strengthened and the processes and flows and flows are uh, built in such a way that the event is in any case notified and registered at the registry entity. So with this, I conclude. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, with this, uh, we have the next uh, presentation from Mr. Osama Bilal. He is Director CRMS at the National Database and Registration Authority, Pakistan, and he will be uh, 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 giving his thoughts on the use of digital technology in real time and online notification and registration of vital events. Uh, Mr. Osama, uh, over to you for your presentation. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Asif. Uh, uh, good day to all the participants in this uh, side events uh, 78 session of the mission. Uh, uh, actually, you have uh, discussed all of the processes and uh, salient features of the upcoming uh, linkages with the health sector of uh, CRVS. Uh, basically, uh, uh, Nadra is looking forward right from the day first to digitize all the uh, birth events and death events. Uh, the process started in 2004, actually, with the name of CBRC. This was initially uh, started from the uh, Punjab province. And later on in 2006, the dynamics uh, and uh, the process uh, has uh, grown up to the uh, Punjab, KP, uh, uh, ex Fata, and uh, Azad Jammu and Kashmir, and Gilgit Baltistan. Uh, initially, uh, manual registration uh, forms were used to be filled for these uh, vital events. And then uh, uh, 2004 was the first year in which they have digitized the uh, vital events. Uh, in 2018, uh, we uh, introduced digital secure paper. That was the first uh, security enabled uh, paper uh, used to uh, uh, show the vital events details, and that, is, that was verifiable as well through different security codes. Uh, in 2019, uh, we uh, promoted ourselves to the online system. All these four events, vital events, were uh, started as uh, online registration. And this brings uh, a lot of benefits to the uh, public and to the uh, uh, local governments, cantonment boards, that they can uh, easily and across uh, the country uh, see the vital events registration. Like nobody can uh, go for the duplication and do any uh, um, anything else with the data. So we were starting in 2018, uh, this uh, 2019, this online CRMS application. Uh, here, um, I would say that this was just a, a baseline for the uh, linkages of uh, online notification. Uh, in 2020 21, uh, as we uh, see the Planning Commission initiatives for the linkages of the health, uh, um, most of the uh, things were not like uh, they were not sync up. Uh, Planning Commission started this uh, initiative and uh, jointly, Nadra uh, again uh, meet up with this. Uh, uh, this I would say this uh, um, software. Uh, um, hello. So jointly, so, Nadra. Hello. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, you are audible. Go on. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Nadra and uh, um, Planning Commission started this initiative of uh, linkages online notification. Uh, software for this uh, uh, health, uh, health sector is almost ready. Uh, however, some re user requirements and business rule uh, approval of the MOU, uh, necessary legislations and financials are uh, uh, awaiting. Um, from our side, we are almost prepared. We have uh, various meetings with the Planning Commission and Health Sector regarding this uh, software. Uh, but you know, um, 
as far as I've discussed the user requirement, business rules, approval of MOU, necessary legislation and financials, that has to be done. Uh, once it's ready from the planning commission and the health side, then um, we are hopeful that this will soon be, uh, inshallah, uh, starting on um, the rest. Uh, I would say that uh, this will be more like uh, helpful for the general public for the uh, local governments to make some planning, some uh, necessary uh, arrangements uh, for their uh, uh, strategic goals. And uh, uh, it's a good, it's a good uh, uh, initiative. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Osama, for uh, apprising us about the uh, developments about the software and uh, I must uh, appreciate uh, the role of NADRA uh, in, the, in the development of this software because uh, this software is the backbone of the, this reform system. And actually this addition, because currently in Pakistan, uh, currently the registrations are uh, being made at the Union Council uh, with the help uh, with the help of the software already uh, operational developed and it is operational at the UCs. But for the notification of these these events from the health uh, sector, from the uh, fixed health facilities and communities uh, to the registering entity, uh, as a as a, as a matter of system, as mandate of the state. Uh, an additional layer, which Mr. Osama Bilad referred, uh, uh, that, uh, that is the main, I mean, uh, 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 you can say the linchpin, where it, uh, that is going to uh, uh, communicate real time online uh, communication of the notifications to the uh, registering entity, where uh, this additional layer is integrated with the existing software already operational uh, by NADRA. So, uh, uh, this is something a uh, remarkable, I mean, uh, contribution from, from NADRA for the mainstreaming of health sector in the notification of the events. So thank you very much, Mr. Osama. And now, uh, next, uh, uh, I request uh, Mr. Mukaddar Shah, he is program analyst uh, in UNFPA Pakistan office uh, to apprise us about the role of Legislate, uh, legislation and legislative reforms uh, in vital events notification. Uh, I um, initially just uh, touch base with this uh, aspect, legislative aspect in my presentation, and now uh, Mr. Mukaddar Shah will be elaborating on the legislative aspect in order to optimally implement the reform processes and flows. Uh, within the like, existing legislative Mario of Pakistan. So over to you, uh, Mr. Mukaddasha, uh, for your presentation. Thank you very much, Dr. Asif. Uh, can you see my presentation? No, currently it is not visible. Is it now? Yeah, yeah, no, it's visible. Please go. Thank you very much, Dr. Osif, for giving us this opportunity to highlight some of aspect on the legal framework for the CRVS. Uh, you all know that the National CRVS Steering and Coordination Committee has formulated some key thematic areas of CRVS, and they are considered the key areas for strengthening the CRVS in Pakistan. These areas lays emphasis on the availability of legal framework, ensure availability of physical, human, and financial resources for CRVS, mechanism for data access, its use in ensuring quality, registration practices, universal coverage, and completeness of the data, death certification, cause of death, and ICD mortality coding practices, and mainstreaming vulnerable population in the CRVS system in the country. So I'll mainly focus on the legal framework. Uh, 
Uh, you all know an effective legal framework is fundamental prerequisite for the smooth functioning and efficient performance of any system. Good service data and increased demand are difficult to achieve without having a well conceived legal framework. Both legal and statistical functions should be reflected in the CRVS law. It should provide the guidance on registration as well as the role and responsibilities. Currently in the case of civil registration and vital statistics test uh, practices in Pakistan, the laws, bylaws, regulations, standard procedures, clear definitions, standard formats or forms are not uniformly implemented in Pakistan due to shortcoming in the legal framework, the roles and responsibility are not very clearly defined. There exists a conflict between the mandate of the local government departments who are responsible for civil registration of vital events and the NADRA being the national data repository. These are the needs which have been delineated under national framework of vital events registration reforms. These includes the definition of vital events, making the registration compulsory, registration free of charge and access without discrimination, aligning death certification with international standards, etc. The Ministry of Planning, Development and Special Initiative has recently drafted the CRVS reform bills in line with the national framework on vital event registration reforms in collaboration of UNFPA. These are the key salient features of the draft bill to support notification of vital events. This is also somehow touched upon by Dr. Asif. The first is the responsibility of the notification has been now shifted from individual to the state, especially in notification of births, deaths, and cause of death. The second, the definition of various relevant terms have been now clearly defined like notification, registration, and certification, etc. The third, the health sector shall be vested with the responsibility to ensure notification of cases of births and deaths with causes of death occurred in hospitals or health facilities or as notified by their field staff, including lady health workers, community midwives, workers of polio campaign or any other staff involved in the country to the concerned council in the manner as they may be agreed upon the concerned department. The fourth one, the real time notification of births and deaths from health sector suggested, however, until the IT-based civil registration data management system is put in place, the notification of all births and deaths is required to be registered within 15 days of occurrence of the event. The concerned registering entity shall facilitate the registration of birth beyond 15 days, subject to the compliance of procedure by the applicant under, under this act and subsequent relevant rules. Additionally, the use of prescribed standard forms at all levels for notifications, flow of information and data security, use of digital application and capacity building are also mentioned under national framework of vital events registration reforms. My uh, last slide. We are short of time. Uh, last slide. Thank you. We went legal and instrumental framework will be effectively applicable through restructured design and implementation of the CRVS operational procedures and practices to ensure the essential function of the civil registration in providing legal identity, civil status, family relation, family relationship, nationality, and other rights. So these are these, this will definitely facilitate the transmission of data to the approved departments for the production of vital statistics. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Mukhada Shah, for your uh, very uh, explicit and very, uh, you know, uh, covering all the aspects uh, about the legislation 
uh, reforms that we are currently uh, under uh, going uh, in order to ensure the smooth uh, implementation of the reforms package in Pakistan. So uh, now uh, we have uh, a video uh, presentation from Mr. Martin. Uh, he is technical director, CRVS, uh, public health programs from Vital Strategies. And, uh, I'll, uh, and this is on the role of health sector in uh, civil registration, options to increase registration of deaths and cause of deaths. Uh, so with this kindly, if we can have this uh, video statement and presentation. Good morning. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Martin Bracci. I'm the technical director for CRVS at Vital Strategies. I'd like to thank Dr. Asif and the Embassy of Pakistan in uh, Bangkok for the opportunity to be part of this event today. And I also would like to say that we are very happy to be part of the CRVS partners supporting Pakistan with strengthening and the great efforts for the strengthening of the CRVS system in Pakistan. Um, I'm very sorry that I cannot do this presentation in real time. I am traveling and therefore uh, opted for a pre-recorded contribution to this side event. So honorable ladies and gentlemen, um, as you can see from the slides, the title of my presentation is the role of the health sector in civil registration, options to increase registration of death and cause of death information. As the outline of my presentation, what I will be aiming to do is to show different options on how um, we can help to ensure or how the health sector can help to ensure that all deaths that are known um, in the health sector are registered with the civil registry and good cause of death information is collected. I will be talking through a bit of background on this, going through some options. The options are particularly for the collection of fact of the event. So fact of death also works for birth, but fact of death um, to capture that and um, that interoperability to capture the fact of the death also opens up many different um, opportunities for the exchange of cause of death information so that this cause of death information also becomes available in the civil registration and by the statistics system. And as a conclusion, I'll be talking about some of the required CRVS system changes um, to really um, fully uh, um, uh, profit from the potential role of the health sector. So in terms of background, and we are all um, I think very well familiar with this, um, often in civil registration systems, family members are responsible for the registration of events, which of course means that if the family does not come to the civil registrar, the events are not registered. Now, many countries, inclu including Pakistan, are working towards a more engaged, a more proactive role of the health sector in civil registration to really get the health sector to notify or even declare um, events that are known to the health sector. And many birth and death um, will be known to the health sector, particularly if community level health sector staff are included. And we believe, and we can see this also in some countries, that this makes civil registration, this has a potential to make civil registration more complete. It also has a potential to make it more equitable because the civil registration process is not dependent on the incentives a family may or may not have, but it's rather dependent on the uh, a standard operating procedure of uh, an official in the health sector and at the civil registry. And as I said at the beginning, this increased interoperability between the two sectors also has the potential to improve the quality and availability of cause of death data in the civil registration system. So as I indicated at the very beginning, I will be walking through three different options. Um, the first option where the uh, health sector uh, just issues proof of the event to the family. The second option where the health sector actually notifies the civil registry. And the third option is where the health sector staff act as informants uh, for the declaration of the vital event. And all of this, again, has the potential to increase the interoperability and sharing of cause of death information and the availability of that information in the CRVS system. So for option one, which is a rather passive role of the health sector, the family is responsible. The family acts as the declarant and the health sector issues proof of the event, but they issue that proof only to the family. So here it is really Civil registration is dependent on the active role of the family. And the civil registrar has no way of being aware of events that the health sector knows about, but that are not um, registered at the civil registry. With option two, where the role of the health sector becomes more proactive, the family remains the informant. However, in addition to issuing proof of the event to the family, the health sector also notifies the 
um, civil registrar about the occurrence of the vital event. The family still has to go to the civil registry, but now the civil registrar can be aware of the events um, that were not registered, where the family didn't come. And the civil registrar may be able um, to follow up on these events. However, if many events are not um, registered by the family, uh, this may be a, a, a daunting task for the civil registrar to follow up on all of these events. But at least there is a record of the event um, in case that is possible. And with the third option, which is the most proactive role for the health sector, the health sector becomes responsible and legally designated as the informant to um, declare the vital event to the civil registrar. So the family is not required to go to the civil registrar for the registration of the event. And the, the civil registration um, of, of the death does not depend on the active role of the family. And as we are seeing this practice being implemented in, in, in several countries, um, this has the potential to ensure the civil registration of events, of course, that occur at health facility, where the interaction with the health sector, with health sector staff is very clear, but it also has the potential to support civil registration of, of deaths and same process works for birth, um, of events that happen in the community that are attended by a community health worker or that are um, uh, uh, that a community health worker becomes aware of shortly after the event has occurred. Now, um, as a, a concluding slide, this um, increased activity or increased role of the health sector in civil registration um, does, depending on the current state of the CRVS system, of course, but may require substantial changes um, to the civil registration system, particularly the, um, the, the, this role, this potential role of the health sector will depend on the business processes in the CRVS system that allow for an interlinkage between the health sector and civil registration. It will also depend on the legal framework that are actually designating health sector staff as um, informants for the registration of the, of the event. And it will also greatly depend on the coordination between agencies and building a kind of an organizational and system interoperability um, to exchange information about the fact of, of death, and again, also uh, for birth, and um, also for the exchange of uh, cause of death information. So the health sector can greatly contribute to ensure that every death is registered and that high quality cause of death information is available. With that, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. Again, apologies that I cannot do this in real time. Please do reach out if you have any questions. Um, and I just put here on this slide also three resources that um, if you're interested in this topic, I encourage you to have a look at these um, and they provide further, much more further detail on the um, issues that I've discussed. Thank you very much. And I, I wish you all the very best for the rest of the, uh, of the side event. Thank you. So that was a wonderful presentation uh, by Mr. Martin. And in fact, Pakistan uh, goes with the option three, whereby the health sector has been mandated to notify the deaths along with the cause of death as per the international uh, form, uh, uh, format prescribed for that purpose and uh, applying the international, uh, international prescribed code for the uh, cause of death. So with this, uh, uh, now we are with a uh, video statement from uh, uh, Ms. Daniela. Uh, she is Chief Child, uh, Chief Child Protection uh, uh, from UNICEF Pakistan office. And she would be giving her statement about the benefits of birth registration uh, system in uh, partnering with the health sector. So with this uh, place, uh, it's over to you for the video. Greetings from Pakistan. I am Daniela Ruchani, Chief Child Protection Unit at Pakistan, and I would like to share with you the ongoing collaboration between the government of Pakistan and UNICEF on uh, civil registration and vital statistics, particularly on birth registration. The key strategy uh, of this collaboration is to promote interoperability between civil registration services and uh, newborn health services. Uh, why it is important to collaborate with the, the health sector? 
first, it can increase and expand coverage of birth registration services to the most vulnerable and remote population. We know that uh, the health system has progressed in the recent years in terms of uh, uh, outreach uh, uh, health services in the most uh, remote and marginalized communities. Uh, the de decentralization of health services provides a great opportunity to um, identify newborn children and ensure that they are notified uh, at birth and uh, um, which then will facilitate the declaration and the registration of birth. Uh, the second important point is uh, the role that the health sector can have in raising awareness of parents and, and caregivers on the importance of uh, birth registration. Uh, the health sector is very well positioned, especially uh, health worker, um, traditional birth attendants, uh, midwives uh, at the primary healthcare facilities. They have um, a privileged access to um, caregivers and uh, uh, newborn children every time uh, they come for uh, monitoring and uh, vaccination. So the healthcare uh, professionals, they can th therefore easily identify the uh, unregistered children and uh, uh, accelerate the process of registration, which uh, then reduces uh, uh, the backlog of, of children uh, um, uh, who have not been registered after birth. Third important point on the collaboration between health and civil registration services is the, the authenticity of data that uh, the Ministry of Health provides. Um, children are data on newborn children are kept and uh, records on uh, on birth and death death are regularly maintained um, by the Ministry of Health. And these records they they provide important details on uh, um, the identification of a child at birth and um, uh, as well the um, records on uh, each and every child which the Ministry of Health uh, includes in the delivery book, uh, the immunization cards or growth and monitoring cards. The fourth important point concerns uh, the reduction of opportunity costs for parents and caregivers of newborn. Uh, because uh, health facilities are decentralized uh, at the uh, village level, parents have regular contact with uh, community-based health uh, workers, uh, lady health workers, and uh, uh, this allows uh, health um, personnel to identify if a child is not registered and uh, um, notify the child uh, and declare its or her birth, um, which will uh, reduce uh, the cost for a parent or a caregiver to reach out the uh, civil registration uh, facilities, which are uh, not uh, as decentralized as health facility and not present at the village level. Uh, so, uh, we have a uh, uh, video statement uh, full of wisdom from the Chief Child Protection of UNICEF uh, Pakistan office. And now, or, now we are with the, uh, the session on experiences from Cambodia on uh, strengthening the linkages between health sector 
and civil registration in Cambodia. And for this purpose, we have uh, Dr. Shav Mone, and he is mm -hmm. Deputy Director of Planning and Health Information Department from Ministry of Health Cambodia. So over to you, Dr. Shav Mone. You need to unmute yourself, please. in Cambodia also and then I will I before I present this I I want to say thank you very much for all participants and for the Dr. Mohammed Asi who provide me the opportunity to present the COVS situation in Cambodia. Uh, next slide please. That is uh, the COVS status. A uh, percentage of births were registered in 2020 is 86.41%, and percentage of uh, dead were registered in 2020 is 50.06%. This report is from uh, GDI Ministry of Interior. Next slide, please. Yeah, we have a COVS legal status in Cambodia. This is uh, the sub-degree uh, 103 for COVS implementation date 19 December 2000. COVS started in 2002. And uh, we have, uh, the, in the Ministry of Health, we have minimum package of activity for the health center and uh, complement three packages of activity for hospital. And now the current C uh, COVS are on the process. Next slide, please. This is uh, 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 the leadership and government. Cambodian have the national governance st structure to oversee COVS implementation. We have COVS National Steering Committee and one COVS and uh, chair by Pri, uh, Deputy Prime Minister. And uh, in this, uh, we have Minister of Interior, consists of ministry member. Uh, three line ministry is a National Institute of Statistics in the Ministry of Planning, Ministry of, of Health, and Ministry of uh, Planning. Ministry of Interiority. COVS National Technical Committee, we have a chair by General Director or General Department of Identification. And we are now on a draft law drafting working group, chair by Secretary of State, Ministry of Justice, and Secretary of State, Ministry of Interior. We have core team consists of three ministries. Ministry of Interior, Ministry of Planning, and Ministry of Health. Working on COVS improvement framework. And now today we are on uh, uh, the, the process and we have conducted uh, a workshop, consultative workshop at the Simri province. And now uh, we have uh, conduct a pilot uh, 14 district in municipal Phnom Penh. And then the uh, led by High Excellency of Chai Panyara, who allowed to conduct in the 14 district in Phnom, uh, municipal Phnom Penh. Next slide, please. We current current draft uh, COVS law, and we can see health facility in in improving bus and that registration. Ministry of, of Health will be responsible issuing birth and death notification for the purpose of civil re registration. Health facility will be responsible for completing medical certificate of cost of the MCCD for facility date and outside of health facility if possible. 
in the law, the Ministry of Health has two roles. Role in issuing the death certificate or birth certificate in the health facility or outside of the health facility. Health facility will ensure that fertile date information is shared with the National Institute of Statistics. Next slide, please. Working on strengthening health registrar in three fronts. One more active role from health sector to notify vital event to increase registration rates. Second, improving quality and accuracy of cost of death information and fertile data to produce reliable and unusable vital statistics. Three, ensuring data sharing interoperability of system to guarantee timely flow of data between CO and health and statistics. Next, please. This is uh, the flow uh, administration uh, district and the uh, uh, Ministry of Health. We have Ministry of Interior, Provincial Hall, District Hall, and Commune Council. So around uh, 1,600 uh, 52 commune council in Cambodia. And then we look at the, the right side is the Ministry of Health that uh, we have flow. Uh, nowadays, Ministry of Health uh, yeah, provide an opportunity to the provincial to submit the data to uh, the provincial health department. And then provincial health department submit data to the national and national hospital submit the data to Ministry of Health. So this is the flow uh, from uh, data flow of the Ministry of Health. Next, please. And this one is a one window service. This is uh, like uh, uh, people nowadays will be certified with this one window service because uh, people can go to civil register for their civil registration for Birth or death. Birth and death occur, people can bring notification letter to register. And then at that time, uh, the requirement from other is uh, so in the, 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 the picture like this, like uh, ID card, like, uh, identification, like uh, family book, something like this. So this is one window service flow. Next slide, please. Yeah, this is uh, the the B, uh, B, BP map, BP map, business process map. When bus occurring at health facility, we can, uh, yeah, director of uh, the, the hospital or the health center will provide bus notification form to the the family and the family can take this uh, letter to 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 uh, bus registration and this is the b because the sbp map and this is the, the like the software that uh, we, we download from our like visa g we call visa g map yeah and uh, the flow here is uh, like and this one is a uh, sbp yeah Listen, yeah, yeah, design. Bus occurring at a health facility. So when we have bus occur, and then with by or physician doctor call field discharge form. When we complete the discharge form, chief of health fac health facility we sign on and issue bus notification letter to parent or relative. So when parent and relative receive bus notification form, then they will go to uh, to register. And this is uh, uh, the process yeah, that we we show in the map. And this uh, this about uh, as design BP map is uh, like a meeting with the core team 
we more frequently and then uh, we have discussed and discuss and we design and redesign a lot of things. Now we come to uh, the final, but not, uh, not really final, just uh, on the, the process. And then we hope that uh, this uh, visa G map will be uh, come to the end soon in, uh, in a short time. And then <clears throat> thank you for Cambodian slides. Thank you for your patient listening. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Moni, for this wonderful presentation that uh, effectively, effectively depicted the uh, mainstreaming of your health sector in the uh, notification of the vital events to the civil registrar. And you also mentioned about the legislative uh, reforms that you uh, have in this uh, regard for, uh, for effective uh, notification and registration of these vital events. Uh, so thank you again. Thank you very much. And now we have a video statement from uh, Mr. Stephen Schwartz. Uh, he is director a division of vital statistics at Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the US. Uh, so uh, please, if you can display the video statement. Mr. Chairman, Madam Chair, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, Greetings from Washington, D.C., USA. It's a pleasure to speak to all of you during SCAP's 78th Commission session. It's easy for the United States to speak about the advantages that health sector involvement can offer for CRVS as the United States Civil Registration and Vital Statistics System was designed from the beginning to be part of the health sector. Like the current pandemic, the US CRVS system was developed in response to repeated epidemics. In the, in the US case of yellow fever, typhoid, and cholera. The goal was to provide critically needed public health information on epidemic trends. Placing a CRBS system within the health sector provides a number of advantages. Public access. There are far more health facilities than civil registration offices. No cost services. Health personnel complete birth and death forms at no charge. Real-time quality data. Birth and death data are recorded at the time of the event. Increasing birth notifications. More and more deliveries are occurring in health facilities. Cause of death, the health sector produces quality cause of death data essential for government needs, in particular during epidemics. Finally, I should mention that previously, I was the registrar of birth and deaths in New York City. As registrar, I never had to worry about the completeness of registration. Birth and death certificates are needed for many reasons. School enrollment, driver's licenses, passports, life insurance claims, and inheritance claims, among others. Countries should strive to create additional certificate requirements that will incentivize individuals to register their families, births, and deaths. To conclude, the United States looks forward to supporting work of across the region in getting everyone in the picture. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Madam Chair, excellent. Uh, so with this uh, video statement, uh, we come to the conclusion of this side event. And I am very much thankful uh, to UNSCAP uh, to, uh, for uh, making us arrange this side event and giving us the opportunity uh, to apprise the stakeholders and the peer countries in this ASCAP region about the reforms that uh, we have uh, 
uh, worked out and currently we are implementing uh, initially at the Islamabad capital territory uh, and later on as I mentioned earlier we would be rolling it out to the rest of the countries and the basic again I would reiterate the basic the policy shift is the mainstreaming of health sector in notification of births and deaths number one and number two strengthening of the institution of union councils the registering entities in pakistan uh, uh, to effect uh, to capture the notification of the marriages and divorces and to register them uh, uh, in such a way that we do not miss any such event because currently in Pakistan uh, we we do not have any information that how much and to what extent how much percentages of the marriages and divorces are registered but we don't have any data. Similarly, uh, according to the last uh, uh, survey, PDHS survey in Pakistan, only 42 percent of births under uh, of children under five. Uh, they are their birth is registered and similarly uh, less than five percent of deaths are registered uh, this is the latest survey that tells us so uh, these reforms that i concisely uh, mentioned in my presentation earlier in this side side event they are meant to uh, bring about universality of the registration of these vital events by making the health sector responsible for the notification of these vital events, or uh, these uh, vital events to the registering entity, making the institution of UCs more robust and more strengthened to uh, register for the marriages and divorces. And uh, these reforms bring about the requisite legislative milieu that is required to effectively uh, uh, and, and that pave the way and, produce, and, and bring about the conducive environment for the implementation of these reforms. And at this point, I have a suggestion uh, that in order to enhance the collaborations between the countries of this region, uh, ASCAP region, and uh, in particularly uh, the countries of SARC region who are also part of this ASCAP region, if we can uh, at the forum of the uh, earlier uh, setup that was established, that is the CRA, civil registrars of SAR countries, if we can again rejuvenate uh, this uh, setup and uh, and share our learnings and our works to for our common objective and goal of universality of the registration of the vital events in our region. Uh, that result in, at optimal level of uh, uh, you know, statistics and generation of evidence for evidence-based policy and planning. And uh, we are open uh, for any uh, queries, questions, and uh, whatever they are in your minds because the because the time is short. I otherwise I would have loved to uh, clarify all such. Uh, points that might be there in your minds, it, but any in any case, I am available telephonically on WhatsApp or online to uh, bring about any clarity that is re required uh, on the uh, reforms package that we have worked out and that is currently under implementation in Pakistan. And we are open to work in collaboration in the best interest of this region to. Uh, to further work on, to bring further refinements uh, in the registration of the, uh, in the system for an optimal registration of the vital events. And at this point, I would also request, uh, uh, before closing, uh, request Ms. Tanya uh, for his remarks, if any, if, if she has. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much. You. Um, I wasn't planning to do lots of remarks, but just thank you everyone for joining and in particular, thank you for our wonderful colleagues from Pakistan to leading on this uh, very relevant and important side event. It's very exciting to see these developments um, with the 
reforms both in Pakistan and in other countries as well. And of course, ESCAP are very happy to to follow this uh, development um, and helping supporting countries in our region so we can get everyone in the picture. Thank you very much. So thank you very much again, all the uh, distinguished colleagues and participants who participated in this side event. Uh, thank you very much again and hopefully uh, see you again uh, at some uh, other time later on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we close this session. Thank you very much.